to our college basketball halftime report. News from the coaches. Seton Hall impressive. They have a seven-point lead at halftime. Let's go back to the rack. John Saunders and the Special K, Clark Kellogg. Thanks a lot, Chris Fowler. 43-36 to 36 is the lead. The Seton Hall Pirates deck the hall, as I said, in the Christmas spirit they were talking about, but it hasn't quite gone that way. And as we look at the stats, we'll get it to in a moment. Michael Cooper has been the main factor, but here's the stats. You see the field goals right there. Seton Hall shooting over 50%. Rutgers down to where they normally are this season. That's around 33. They're really struggling. They're not getting many good shooting opportunities inside because of the Hall's defense and not many second shots at all. Four of eight from three-point range for Rutgers, two of six at this point for Seton Hall. But the man we talked about, Michael Cooper, has been doing it all over the floor. You love him tonight. Oh, I absolutely love the way he's playing. Here you're going to see him take it all the way to the basket, under control. The Rutgers defenders get there late. Nice ball fake here. Pump fake, got it up on the glass and completed a three-point play. He's been outstanding in the first half. He's been doing it from outside as well as we watch Ollie Taylor push the ball up. But the man who's been converting, Michael Cooper. This was at the end of a nine-point run. Here, Cooper showing you that despite his bulk and his strength, he's got a nice touch from deep. Rutgers at this point, though, still staying into the game, but the big factor is number three, the transfer from Syracuse. Earl Duncan, a strong guard. Here he's going to show you what strength can do for you inside. Penetration, able to get the ball up on the glass and draw the foul. He's been the only double-digit double digit score for um, Rutgers this time. Cooper with 14 points, Bolsey and Avent, the guys we talked about up front with eight points apiece. Dickinson coming off the bench. Hey, we must be soothsayers or something. We talked about these guys off the top of the show. Dickinson, the freshman, has come through. Earl Duncan with 13 points. Savage has been relatively quiet, only seven points at this point for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Back with the second half in just a moment. 43 to 36, Seton Hall has the lead. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Seton Hall at Rutgers, is brought to you by Energizer Batteries. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. By Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local dealership today. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, the clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. to the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. John Saunders along with Clark Kellogg. Seton Hall leads it 43-36. to and As we take a look at our storyline and the band as well, the reason is very obvious. Rutgers is just not shooting well. They really aren't. Their front line, Savage, Duncan, and Hughes are combined 6 of 20. The team only 38% field goal shooting. Seton Hall has done a great job on the backboard. Michael Cooper has been fabulous in the first half doing it all and there you see the 24 to 12 edge on the glass we're just about ready to get underway with the second half here Seton Hall Pirates will send their starting five back in that's no surprise Rutgers comes back with their save five as well Earl Duncan thinks about a three gets to hair in the air that one's long Danica with a good follow though to come up with it. Tight rims here, you're gonna usually see long rebounds on tight rims. Savage from three, Hooper gets a hand on the ball, fighting for it underneath, the foul is called on Anthony Avent, who picks up his third foul of the game early here in the second half. Well again, the foul issue could be a factor, we talked about it early, the first half not really a problem. Here's the Aaron shot, blocked by Cooper, and then Duckett is sandwiched between two Seton Hall players. Avent picked up the foul. We'll have to keep an eye on Avent now. As we say, that's his third. We haven't even hit the one-minute mark here in the second half. Hughes thinks about three, takes a couple of steps in, gets a nice bounce, and it goes in. Rutgers needs to get their big guns underway because they were silent in the first half. And they've got to get those guys loaded up and firing on all cylinders. And then that way the crowd can find its, its way back into this one as well. Terry DeHair from three and hands it. Bumping underneath and Volsey will be called for the foul. And Franz Volsey picks up his third foul. 
basket will count on the three-point shot. The foul came after the shot, banging away in the lane. And that's a big turn of events with Volsi and Avan picking up their third fouls early. Huge, could be very huge. Hughes wants to work on Volsi. Volsi backs off, so he decides to shoot it. Well, you almost have to give Hughes that shot. It's about an 18, 19 footer. And Volsi did the wise thing just to kind of give him token pressure. Hughes, who was pretty silent in the first half, has hit four quick ones here in the second half. pointed out to Cooper that was an excellent pass. He just couldn't, Avent just couldn't, he didn't squeeze it. Lost sight of it before it got into his hand. Look for Rick Datica to shoot the ball more as Earl Duncan tries to dish it to duck it. He doesn't get it, but it'll still be Rutgers' ball. It's PJ out of the jacket. has only taken two shots on the night. And that is hard to believe. He's hitting on a three-pointer. Here's a guy who has been the top three-point shooter in the history so ever since they put the three-point line in there. He was one of their leading scorers last year. Duncan with a nice turnaround. Well, the Scarlet Knights come out knocking down some perimeter shots. Something they didn't do in the first half. to make some noise. <laughs> Avent with a nice little left-handed hook. <laughs> you got to excuse me for being excited when the big guys in the paint make those kind of moves, John, but, oh, I love to see a guy go to the opposite hand in the lane. It's the way you used to do it. On occasion. He fused for three. He doesn't even touch the rim. You think Wilson shook him up a little bit in the locker room? Wolsey working on Duckett. Good shot over top of the big guy. The cast of characters has changed for the Seton Hall team, but the way they play, their poise and their confidence on the road still much a part of what they do. Earl Duncan's shot is off the mark. Ollie Taylor dishes off to Cooper. Duckett cuts his lane off. Back comes Rutgers. It's way short, and hair comes up with it. Taylor took steps. They didn't call it, and hair stops and hits a three-pointer. How do you like this youngster's confidence? He comes out early in the first half, knocks down a couple, then goes cold, and right there in transition pulls up from the tray. He is not shy by any stretch of the imagination. He's got three three-pointers, 11 points on the night. Savage lets a three-point shot go that he will not fall. Once again, we're back to this one shot and back the other way. He called dominated the glass. They had 14 defensive rebounds in the first half. Savage extremely cold. Two of ten now on the night. They lob it over to Avent. Good defensive play by Savage, but Avent gets it, and Cooper is there for the easy deuce. Boy, a great look. Somebody lost track of Michael Cooper. I don't know how. He's 6'4", 6'5", and about 220. Seton Hall has the lead back up to 10, 55-45. P.J. and his group doing a job tonight. Point lead for the Hall and Anthony Avent with a nifty move. Hey, even if you haven't ever bounced the ball, if you're watching this game, this is a sweet move to the basket with the opposite hand in the lane. And under the circumstances, the Rutgers team making a run at Avent with that nice little simple move in the paint area. And you really can't stress it enough that Volsey, Avent, and Cooper, as we take a look at the Hall in the second half that high, are so poised, despite none of them being starters last year, you'd never know it. They really play with a lot of poise and composure. Savage with a good drive between the blue jerseys and gets the shot. I think that poise and the, the road mentality is a credit to the coaching staff. Hits one from three-point range. They're still perfect. 
for the half. And that's one way that you weather the storm of the home team making a run at you. Hughes with a nifty move in the paint, he says. You can do it at one end, Anthony Avon, I'll do it at the other end. Boy, has he awakened from his slumber. Hughes has nine points already, and we're just five minutes into the second half. He only had six in the first half, 15 total for Keith Hughes. Bob Wenzel said he's a do-it-all player. Again, his consistency, the only thing lacking, he can do everything. Savage comes up and lays the arm on Anthony Avent, and he's whistled. That's just Savage's first foul of the game. The Tom Savage is his first. Terry DeHair gives it off to Oliver Taylor, who has really shown no sign of the bad ankle that we heard about before the game. Really hasn't. And PJ has really spread out his minutes effectively. Cooper. Cooper wants to give it to Volsey, but good judgment didn't force it. They've got two guys around, and they're really sagging in. Wolsey pushed off on Keith Hughes as he tried to get position and he's whistled. And that is four on Franz Wolsey. And now PJ has a decision to make. It's not a hard one as he brings Dickinson in. But with 14 minutes left in the game, how long can he sit down Franz Wolsey? Here, let's take a look at this. There's the left arm. Oh. And Wolsey. An honest reaction. Duncan throws it up and rims out. So Volsi sits down with four. Avent has three. Seton Hall has a nine-point lead. Dickinson did a nice job in the first half. In eight minutes, he came up with six points. So if, they can, if he can duplicate that kind of effort, PJ will be very pleased. A very efficient time for Dickinson. Eight points, five rebounds in 15 minutes against Wake Forest. He's done a similar job here tonight. PJ going to try to just slow it up just a bit with one of his key players out of the lineup. Cooper loses the dribble, and the Rutgers comes away with it. Oh, nice look. throws it back out to Savage, who bangs down the three-pointer. Well, that's a great look by Duncan to penetrate, and then look back to a good three-point shooter in Savage. The lead is down to six. Shot is short, Hughes with the rebound. Dunking around to here, trying to throw it out to Savage, but Cooper, doing the job on defense as well, knocks it away. Little hedge and get back, came up with the steal that time. Cooper jumped in the lane of Duncan, then was able to react and get a hand on it. Nice play. The hair over top of Duncan, that one is way short. Craig Carter moves it up to Perry. Bang! part of the body well again sometimes it's almost like the over the back foul when you're on a, on the off defensive board or offensive board you're trying to go over the top there are times you might not touch the player and they still whistle the foul here it is same thing wrong place wrong time and again just very incidental contact if any and tough way to get your four Perry gets to shoot two Cut into the lead. You've now sent the two big guys for Seton Hall to the bench with four fouls, Volsey and Avent. Cooper played all 20 minutes in the first half, and you wonder if Rutgers is able to keep up this pace, which has quickened a little bit, where the fatigue will set in with him because he's called on to do an awful lot. Mike Jones checks into the game for Rutgers, and Seton Hall forced to go to a small lineup with three guards in there, Chris, Taylor, and DeHare. 
And this is more than Rutgers liking. They feel like they can match up much better now with Avon and Volpe out of the lineup because they like to play three guards on occasion. And here comes the crowd. second call. They got over for some help. The ball was tipped out, but Rutgers really turning up the defense. I see, that's what happens when you start playing better offensively. That can lift the defense up, and with the crowd going the way they are, the intensity is certainly going to pick up. Four-point game. Seton Hall still with the lead. Just got 12 minutes left. Clock is down to six before the shot is off. And Hughes comes away with the rebound. Carter breaks three along the baseline, and the lead is now just two. Carter able to get to the hole. This 7 0 run, John, has coincided with Bolsey and Avent taking the seat on the seat in the hall bench. They both have four fouls apiece on them. When Bolsey went out of the game, it was a double digit lead. Avent went out shortly after that. A 7 0 run. Certainly this has to rank amongst the top for Noah. Savage for three. That one is short. Good job by Jones to get in there quickly underneath, but it's turned over. Seton Hall needs one here. They've been fighting the shot clock in the five-second count the last three or four possessions. crowd ever, just under 9,000 to hair. That's an NBA three-pointer, and the freshman just calmly bangs it home. How about that, folks? Oh, this guy's a freshman, but he uh, clearly doesn't have the shooter's mentality of a freshman. He's got a veteran shooting mentality. His fourth three-pointer, the hair with 14 points. Jones works it inside to Hughes, tries to get it up with the right hand. Hall comes away with it. Just good position defense that time by Dickinson. Hughes probably should look to take Dickinson away from the basket and maybe try to beat him with the dribble. Dadeker slaps Taylor on the wrist. And he's called for his first foul of the night. I'll tell you what. The Pirates have played the role of pine tree. Bend, but don't break. And they've weathered the storm. They had a little dry spell there, but they've got to lead back to five. Jones. Jones, Jones, it is his first personal 
That's one of the things PJ talked about when he talked to me about Terry DeHair, the fact that he's got great range from three-point distance, but he's also able to put it on the floor and get to that medium-range jump shot, which is a big asset when you got a guy who's a threat from deep that forces defenders to come up on him, and when he can put it down and score in traffic, it makes him that much more versatile. Cooper wants some help. He's double teamed. Finally, DeHair comes to his aid. Boy, Rutgers really getting after it defensively, acting with their feet and hands. DeHair turns. Cooper turns, backs away, puts the shot up, but he's fouled. Well, he's done everything else tonight. Why not go to him when you're trying to keep a team from getting back into your lead? Seven, 61-56, Seton Hall still with the lead. Rutgers got it down to two. And Terry DeHair took care of that with a three-pointer. They made a lot of clutch free throws, and because they were so big, they were able to draw a lot of fouls. They're going to a zone now for the first time because of the foul problem. Seton Hall on his own defense here, 2 3. You may see Rick Dadica then get a chance to get into the offense more if he can bomb away from three outside that zone. Savage along the baseline, good follow. And the foul is on Cooper. Craig Carter was in there very quickly. One of the weaknesses of the zone defense, no specific blockout responsibilities. 90% of the shots from one side come off to the other side, and Carter, flying to the weak side glass, drew the foul. Had control of the basketball, so he'll get two shots. Craig Carter. Well, John, you talked about possibly uh, coming up with a hairdo like that for yourself sometime in the not too distant future. There's huh? no question that Craig Carter leads the Atlantic 10, maybe the nation, in hair. <laughs> yeah. At least, at least in <laughs> hairstyle. No question. <laughs> get his second shot attempt, and the Hall just won't wilt. Dickinson, a freshman, a seven-footer, has been impressive with the time he's used. Carter along the baseline has to throw it out to Duncan for three. No good. It's off the top of the backboard. A nice look that time by Craig Carter on the penetration. Duncan's been pretty good from behind that arc. A six-point lead with their big gun sitting on the bench. Taylor has a clear lane in there. Misses the layup, and Rutgers comes away. Duncan out of control a bit. Savage loses it. It'll be Seton Hall ball. P.J. Carlissimo is giving it to his crew as they come back to the bench. Just the same, they have a six-point lead. John Saunders along with Clark Kellogg. Well, so far, it's been Seton Hall doing most of the ho-ho-hoing here. Reminder, number four against number seven coming up. 
Missouri's knocked off North Carolina, Louisville to win the Maui Classic. Arkansas rated as high as number one in some magazines. Bob Carpenter and Dan Bonner will bring you the exciting action from that. We see Volsey and Avent on the bench. Seton Hall still has the lead, though. Still on top, six-point cushion here. And I'm sure P.J. hoping his troops can hang on to this lead before he sends those two guys back into the game. Probably would do it at the, probably try to go as long as he can without maybe bringing them back. But I would expect to see them back in the next couple of minutes. Seton Hall has done a good job with three guards in there. Taylor throws a big rainbow up. Danica finally comes up with it. Danica from way outside and way off the mark as well. He just has not been able to get in the offense. It's about the only the third shot he's taken tonight. And a good shooter like that, I, I would imagine, has to shoot much more to get exactly. his game going. Hasn't been able to find the rhythm just because he hasn't taken enough shot attempts. Hughes misses one off the glass. Almost steals it back. The ball is tied up. Possession arrow, though, is going to Seton Hall. Well, nice effort that time by Hughes to come up. Here comes Volsey now. <laughs> Going to replace Taylor, who's had a couple of, had the one clear layup that didn't go down, and then the last possession took a took a real tough shot. So PJ gonna sit him down and let him think about it a little bit. Volsey is back into the game. He has four fouls. When they get into the Big East schedule, that won't worry them so much because they'll have six. But tonight, he's only got one more to give. <laughs> I think that's going to help a lot of teams in that conference. A team like Seton Hall, certainly a team like Georgetown, Syracuse, with the big bodies that play physically. That extra foul could be a bonus. No question. The SEC as well will play with six fouls this year. Perry doing a good job on Dickinson. The hair bails him out. This is good execution. They really want to milk a little bit of the clock here. Oh, nice little crossover. Good shot clock down to six before Volsey takes a shot, but he also takes steps. And you can't shoot it to yourself. He lost control on his initial shot attempt and came down with the ball. Nobody touched it. Jim Dickinson, identical numbers to what he had at Wake Forest. 15 minutes. He'll get more than 15 minutes tonight by the time it's all over, but still... A role player as a freshman is doing a tremendous job. Duckett is open along the baseline, but his shot is no good. And Cooper, who seems to be everywhere tonight, has the rebound. Going it all, and he's not had a break other than the halftime and the timeout. Ah! Volsey is alone. He gets a little shove in the back. Perry is whistled, I believe. Seton Hall does a nice job of looking over the top. Whenever a big guy down low has an opportunity to post up. And Rutgers is, has been fronting completely, looking for weak side help, and they haven't gotten it consistently, and the Hall's done a nice job of throwing it down inside with the lob. Wolsey with his 11th point of the night to go with seven rebounds. He was on the bench for six minutes with that fourth foul. Seton Hall managed to hang on to the lead, and here's a chance to push it back up to eight. Attica from way outside, and that's short. Ball is off Rutgers, and Seton Hall will have another chance. I know the Scarlet Knights are a pretty good three-point shooting team, but there comes a time when you have to be very selective in when you're going to shoot the three-point, and I think they've just settled for that three-point maybe a bit too much as opposed to exploring and probing trying to get maybe a higher percentage shot. Volsey with a nice cut, but the shot won't go. It might be also a little bit early to go to that three-pointer. There's still over five minutes left, and there they are, bombs away. Savage that time. I mean, Rutgers, as Duncan takes the three-point shot, they're operating as if there's a minute and a half left in the game. Clearly, they're looking for the three-pointer too much. Again, after the ball's been moved, and you've got a good spot up on taking, but they're not even looking to probe inside for anything else. They're just casting away the three. Rutgers has missed seven consecutive shots. It's been about four minutes since they've scored. Oh. Dickinson along the baseline. Perry thought he had position. I think he reached in. He did have good position with his feet, but he reached in. 
We're going to take a look. How about the big guy laying it on the floor? Now watch the reach. There it is right there. When you come over the top like that, you're always, almost always going to be called for the foul. That's the third on Perry and number six on Rutgers, so the next one will send Seton Hall into the bonus. And Terry DeHair. DeHair is also a great ball handler. Played with Bobby Hurley, of course, at Jersey City. And Bobby Hurley Sr. And they were both great ball handlers. Hurley was really the point guard and DeHair the shooting, but both of them could handle the ball very well. Makes your backcourt that much tougher when you can interchange roles back there. The hair weaving his way in. Doesn't get the shot off as Keith Hughes is there and knock it back into his face. Would help that time by the Scarlet Knights. Let's see if they try to get something other than the tray. Nope. Duncan's three-pointer is off the mark. That's eight shots in a row missed by Rutgers. The hair with a little stutter step kisses it off the glass and it's good. Good no call that time. Excellent no call. Carter tried to get there for the foul. A little too close to the hoop, and the officials just let him play. Terry DeHair with 16 points. Bob Wenzel wants a timeout. His team is down by nine, 67 to 58. 342 left in the game. Welcome back, John Saunders, along with Clark Kellogg. Seton Hall's lead is at nine. We watch Terry DeHair. Is this a freshman? <laughs> he doesn't play like one. Here, excellent no call. Carter tried to take the charge, and DeHair kissed it nicely off the window. Rutgers has been bombing away from the three-point range. They've shot 20 in the game, made six, and two of 12 in the second half. They have not scored in the last five, 16, and I think they've been taking nothing but three-pointers in that time. They really have just settled too quickly for the three-pointer, and again, I mentioned it earlier, they're certainly a pretty good three-point shooting team, but they've struggled from there, and they've settled for it too quickly. They, have, they don't have a dominant post up player, but certainly use and duck it, and even Duncan can get inside and make it happen, but they've just really settled for the outside jump shot far too much. That Seton Hall zone has taken it away, son. Sure, again, the shots have been available in the zone, but when you're trying to make a run, one of the ways you do it, if you're not hitting outside, is to get it inside and try to draw some foul. Carter has to dish it off. Savage again bombs away and again comes up empty. Foul is called on Chris, his second of the night. That foul on Darryl Chris is his second. Anthony Avent still on the Seton bench Hall. for Seton Hall with six. four fouls. Wolsey is in the game with four fouls, but here comes. <laughs> they must have, PJ, PJ heard me. He heard you from down, from up here. <laughs> Avent comes in, Dickinson goes down, and what a job. You can't say enough about the job that the seven-foot freshman did. They've been working him in the weight room and want him to tighten up his body a little bit, but I tell you, they've been pleased with his effort and his, effort, his work effort. And Carter converts. There's a chance to get Rutgers to the 60-point mark and get the lead back down to seven with 3.18 left. He knocks down this one. They'll probably go through the full court pressure. Maybe look to kick it away, get it, get it back. They're going to deny the inbounds pass. The hair turns and comes back. Pressure really hasn't been a problem for the hall. Neither has this crowd. They've withstood every rally by the Scarlet Knights. Seton Hall will work the clock likely with every possession now. They've really gotten some good shot opportunities out of this set where they have four guys up high, one ball handle. The hair finds his way, but Keith Hughes blocked that with his elbow. <laughs> Great help that time by Hughes. The only thing he didn't do was keep it in bounds, but that's not always possible. Here's the drive by DeHair. Good defense by Duncan. There's Hughes clearly over the top with a clean block. A little Syracuse connection there. 
Duncan led the hair right to Hughes, and Hughes took care of him. Fanned him into the lane. I really think Rutgers has to try to put a little more pressure on the ball here. With winding down the clock, becoming their adversary. Duncan backs off in the five second count. He's called off. Again, Seton Hall works the clock. Ten on the shot clock. Foul on Duncan as he's reaching in after the loose ball. Avent will go to the line. <laughs> DJ getting his money for us and getting his full 40 minutes plus of coaching in. You know, just in talking to him, you can tell he really feels good about his club. He likes the way they play. They play together. They work hard defensively and on the board. And when you're doing those two things, if you're rebounding well and playing pretty good defense, you're going to be in most games. Avent with his 11 point. I saw a quote somewhere where P.J. said, oh, we, could, we could lose 28 games. <laughs> Have you ever met a coach yet who thinks he has any kind of a team? Yeah, it doesn't make any difference whether it's football or basketball. Lou Holtz has gotten a reputation of poor mouth in his squad before games. And I think it's just part of being a coach. It's a nine-point Seton Hall lead. Rutgers has been just bombing away from three-point range here in the second half, but no success. Hughes finally ends the drought with a good three-pointer to get the lead just back to six. Well, again, against the zone, that's available, and Hughes came out of the locker room at halftime and got nine quick points, and since then, he's kind of been involved in that drought that his teammates suffered through. He has 18 points on the night, but you're right. He came out really quickly. Volsey and Avent, four fouls apiece. Cooper with 17 points. He had 14 at halftime. Rutgers was held close for five minutes, 40 seconds. You see, they're not shooting well as they haven't been this year. You have to be impressed with the poise of this freshman of Seton Hall. Terry DeHair, he's their leading scorer. Dickinson doing a tremendous job off the bench. And Chris comes up calmly, hits the first one, doesn't get the second one, but still doing a great job. Oh, great hustle to dig it out of there. And Dadica commits the foul. Well, was that Chris that went down and got that ball out of the scramble? Yes, he was. Well, oh, Seton Hall last year surprised a lot of people, played with so much poise, and did such a great job in getting to the final game. Carry over that mentality and that type of toughness. The players may change, but that type of, of attitude can be instilled in every kid that comes into the program and clearly displaying itself tonight. Carter swings it to Hughes, who lets a three pointer go and will fall. Savage is over top of the back of Cooper, and that's his third. The One minute, 30 seconds left in the game. A seven point lead, Bob Wenzel possibly seeing this one slip away from him. Still a lot of time in college basketball, as you know. Seton Hall has answered every challenge thus far. You know, when you've got good three point shooters, speaking of Rutgers, as a coach, you really don't want to keep them from looking for that shot because they're pretty good at it, but at the same time, the players have to be able to make good enough judgments to know when they need to look for something else. A long bomb by Craig Carter drops in, and finally the three-pointers are starting to go. You shoot enough of them, they're bound to. <laughs> That's right. Dattica reaches around and slaps the wrist of Anthony Avent to stop the clock again. That's his fourth. And right here we get down to what supposedly was going to be a, a point of the rules people and the <laughs> officials to look at and start calling those intentional fouls. Point of emphasis they call it and my man Dick Vitale last night was really screaming about it but hey Dick screams about everything. <laughs> no question. But he's got a valid point. 
That's a miss. Rutgers down by six. Two possessions can tie the game. See, a quick two here is as good as a three, in my opinion, but now you almost, because you haven't gotten a quick two. Oh, oh, oh yes, you have. <laughs> He's Hughes finds the opening and jams it down. Oh, my, who they? Oh, they missed the foul on Hughes, who just actually tried to grab. I don't know who it was. Was it the hair? Two biggest free throws of his young collegiate career. 
It's a four-point lead as Hughes lets a three-point shot go, and there's Terry DeHair to pull down the long rebound. Duncan reaching around and did get a piece of the ball, but got more of Avent. Stops the clock. It's a four-point game. Seton Hall can pretty much win it at the line. Avent only a 55% free throw shooter, although he shot better than that so far tonight. It was 4-4 in the first half. Six of seven on the night. for three. It's long. Hooper hauls down the rebound and Dadica has to commit the foul. Dadica has fouled out of the game with seven seconds left. There you saw his graphic, just three points for Dadica. Really didn't look to shoot the basketball tonight. And they need some offensive production from him. You wonder about the adjustment for Rick Datica from the point guard to the two guard. Well, again, it's still early in the season. You've got two new bodies in Duncan and Hughes that are playing significant minutes. That forces Datica to make an adjustment. That forces Craig Carter to make an adjustment. And, and clearly, as the season progresses, by the time the conference schedule starts, the kinks will be ironed out. This Rutgers team should be a team to reckon with in the A-10. Seton Hall trying to make its four straight wins over Rutgers. Cooper pushes the lead to five. P.J. Carlissimo wants a timeout to talk about the strategy after the next free throw. You have to be impressed, though, by Seton Hall. I mean, we've seen them talk about losing 82% of their offense, 70% of their rebounders. Puts on the floor is schooled so well. They play tremendous defense. And they just don't give you any second chances. And they rarely beat themselves. They stay within what they're trying to do. When you've got big physical bodies, and again, the foul situation didn't become an issue until midway through, well, actually early in the second half. And then they got production from Jim Dickinson, and then just had a tremendous game from Michael Cooper. We want to take a moment here to send our condolences to Rutgers University. Dr. Edward J. Wildstein, Rutgers 17th president, died of a heart attack last weekend at the age of 64. He has served as president of New Jersey State University since 1971, a big part of moving Rutgers into the arena of big-time athletics, and he was one of the founding fathers of this building here. ESPN's condolences to Rutgers and to Dr. Wildstein's family. Cooper misses the second. It'll still take two possessions for Rutgers, and with only three seconds left, as the shot is off, the time will run out. It runs out on the Scarlet Knights, and Seton Hall has won it 79 to 74. Their fourth straight win over Rutgers, and their first ever here at the Athletic Center. Right now, let's go to Chris Fowler. Okay, thank you, John and Clark. So P.J. Carlissimo now 112 and 112 in his career. It's been a long climb back to 500 after a rough start. December 23rd, uh, uh, Seton Hall will take on Michigan rematch of last year's championship.